What's up, fam? I got a little something for you. Coming in, got a little, got us a little Airbnb here on the lake. Kind of cool spot. It's early morning. I was thinking about you guys. And, uh, well, that's not true. I was actually thinking about myself. And then I thought, gotta show me something. And then I thought about you guys. And I was like, oh man, we gotta get this out. So I'm sitting here and you know, let's be real. We, th we think about money. A I think about money a lot. I'll speak for myself. I think about money a lot. I think about success a lot. I think about uh, getting above worry, fear. And because there there's a level of like, we almost go up these levels, right? So we can get to a spot where we don't fear running out anymore. But because I don't, I don't have that low level, I don't have that low level underlying fear anymore where I'm like, oh man, what if I can't pay my bills? God has proven himself so faithful over the last 20 years that I've been living this way that that's out of my mind. I know he always provides. But then you go to another level where it's like, okay, but what about this? And then you catch yourself, it's like, oh, that's a, that's a low level fear of running out again. Just at a, it's at a higher level, I guess. A higher low level fear of running out. So we get these little levels and levels and levels. So let's look here. And I, this is gonna help you. Second Corinthians nine, this is kind of like my favorite financial set of scriptures. It has helped me so much. I'm gonna read it in the new living. Uh, remember this, second Corinthians nine, verse six. Context is a financial offering. The first of that chapter talks about that they're in the process of doing a ministry of giving. So they're literally giving money. This is not a Oh, they're not talking about physical money and riches. They're talking about spiritual riches. No, it's literally physical money. Go read it for yourself, please. So it goes down to verse six. Remember this. A farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. This is the uh, new living. You must decide in your heart how much to give. Don't give reluctantly or in response to, pr response to pressure, for God loves a person who gives cheerfully and here we go god will generously provide all you need then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others it goes on to say for god's the one who provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat in the same way he will provide and increase provide and increase there's my word your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you Yes, you will be enriched, which means, if you look that word up, it means to be made rich. You will be made rich in every way so that you can always be generous. So basically, that scripture is saying you can't run out of money. God's got new money coming to you all the time. New money. The, uh, the Amplified Classic, you've heard me teach it, right there it says, God is able to make all grace, favor, and earthly blessing come to you in abundance. So no matter the situation, circumstance, or need, you will have all you need and more to give to every good work and charitable donation. So listen to this. If you truly believe, this is what God was posing this question to me, so I'm posing it to you. If you truly believed new money always comes, what would you do? If you were to act as if 2 Corinthians 9, 8 was true, how would you act? How would you think? How would you behave and how would you feel? And that how would you feel is super important, especially when we are working on mindsets and things like this. And here's what triggered all this is I, I had a thought of generosity about giving, giving someone a, a, a pretty significant amount of money uh, because there's, there's something he wants to do and this would kind of fund that. And so I thought about it and then I thought, this is subconscious because it, like I said, it's, it's not just a couple hundred bucks that I was uh, thinking about, right? Prompted about, it was, you know, somewhat significant amount. And I just thought, well, that would decrease my bank accounts by this much. And that wouldn't, that wouldn't feel very good. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, catch yourself. What is going on right here? See, a lot of people would, would have that thought and be like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that wouldn't be wisdom right? That wouldn't be wise for me to do because we want to keep our, our savings accounts, storage accounts at a certain level, right? We need wisdom. 
hold on. What's really going on here? I was, I was tempted to be generous, all right? Does the devil tempt us to be generous? No, of course not. See, we have a thought of generosity, and then the enemy swoops in right behind it to give you that thought of, oh, yeah, 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 that wouldn't be a good idea. See, that wouldn't be very wise. See, you don't want your bank accounts to get like to that level. But again, here's what's really happening. This is where we got to get good, is thinking through the enemy's strategies and thought processes to think, oh, because basically, if you, if, you, if you ask yourself why enough times, you will find the root of why you're thinking what you're thinking. And if that root is fear-based, we need to eliminate it and we need to trump it. We need to override it with one of God's promises. So thought patterns, thought patterns and thought habits, okay? This is what we're working to reprogram. Remember Romans 12 too, renew your mind to the word of God. So we have to renew it. We have to reprogram it. You have an old programming that's stopping you. And here's what God was showing me. We must completely remove the subconscious thought that you could run out of money. Because that thought is blocking your generosity. It is hindering your generosity. It is a seed blocking thought. It's keeping you from sowing seed. So for instance, I was prompted to sow this significant amount of money into my friend's life. And then immediately I thought, Ooh, but that would be painful because we put my bank account down here. And then what if no new money comes in? Oh, a fear. What if no new, that's a disempowering thought. That, that thought takes power away from me. What if no new money comes in? Well, then I don't believe 2 Corinthians 9, 8 is true, but I do believe it's true. So therefore, I can give that amount of money because new money will come in. God always makes all grace, favor, and earthly blessing come to me in abundance. So I always have what I need and I have extra to give to every good work. Do you see what I'm saying? This is a this is what we gotta get better at as Christians. So to reprogram your thinking, you can't just try to eliminate a thought, you have to replace it. That's why it's called reprogramming or renewing. You have to put a new program in its place because the thought pattern is established. That thought pattern is there where it's like, oh yeah. Now, if, if I was prompted to give this guy a hundred bucks, I'd just be like, yep, here you go. But because it's a bigger amount, again, new levels, reprogramming to new levels. Because it's a bigger amount, I had to catch myself again and do this. So instead, anytime you find yourself thinking, what if no new money comes in or what if we run out of money? You stop and you say, you have to replace that. I'm going to focus my thinking on this and I'm gonna speak it out loud. God, I thank you that you are sending new money to me right now in abundance, more than I need, plus extra, so that I can always be generous. God, I think there's plenty more where that came from. Then you go to the gas pump, thank you God, there's plenty more where that came from. You act on that generosity thought, and God, I think there's plenty more where that came from. I think that you're sending new money to me right now in abundance. Let's go, baby. Man, I'm yours, I'm yours to command, tell me what to do today. And uh, that new money always comes in. I'm a tither, I'm a seed sower. I sow generously, I reap generously, I give cheerfully, not reluctantly, or without, with, in response to pressure, as it says. Think about that, guys. What if no new money comes in? We're gonna eliminate that thought and replace it with, God, I thank you that you're sending new money to me right now in abundance, more than I need, with extra, so that I can always be generous. And I didn't just make that up. That was from the 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 12 uh, verses that I read you. So it's based on the word. It's based on a promise. So that's what I want you to do today. Let's go back to the, the question real quick. Travis, if you truly believed new money always comes, what would you do? How would you act? How would you think? How would you behave? And how would you feel? Meditate on that today. How would you feel if, if you truly believed, I can't run out of money. If you truly believed that new money would always come, would you go give that person that money? How generous would you be? What would you give in the, the offering bucket at church? What about tithing? Things like this. Because again, the real reason we need to get this new programming in us is because it is blocking our generosity. It is, it is a seed sowing blocking thought. It blocks you from sowing seed. So I have a generosity thought, and yes, it's it's a bigger number 
than usual. I have to go. If I, if I act on that, it's me truly believing in God's promise in his word. If I don't act on it, then it's me saying, I guess I don't actually believe what God said, and I'm not going to sow that seed. And what if God, what that harvest that comes from me sowing that seed is the breakthrough, is the next level? Ah, think on this today. I love you guys. Go read 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 12. I've read it to you in the New Living. The Amplified Classic is my favorite. Go get that into you. Ask yourself that question. Meditate on it. How would you feel? That's the main one. How would you feel if you knew you couldn't run out of money or if you truly believed that new money always comes into your life? Love you guys. See you in the next one.